A woman tried to break into my car yesterday to rescue my dog from 60 degree weather. Anyone else have stories of idiotic vigilantes? A lady got concerned about my dog in my car too. It was funny because she didn't notice me in the car. Someone needs to take care of their D. Oh, hello there. My family had a Staffordshire Bull Terrier when I was young called Bert. Bert used to love dangling and tugging on tree branches and would spend up to 20 minutes just growling and dangling off a branch. Anyway, one day the police arrived and accused us of hanging a dog. My mum hadn't got a clue what was going on for a while until she realized. Bert. So she took the officer to the field where the dog was dangling and then shouted him. He came bounding over and when told to get the tree he sprinted back to attack the branch. The policeman just laughed and apologized. I still have no idea why someone would look at a dog which was supposedly being hanged and just ring the police instead of going and helping the dog. Very poor vigilantes in the UK. Well, to start off I used to volunteer quite a bit at my local humane society. While volunteering one day someone came in to drop off a large mailboxer with a large tumor hanging from his groin. Several smaller tumors on his body. Giant puss. Filled abscesses between his toes and patches of fur missing due to what I later found out was a thyroid problem. Also, he was severely overweight and looked like he hadn't seen the outside of a kennel in years. The HS worker took one look at the dog after sign in and decided he should be put down in a few days. I've always had a soft spot for large, galuti dogs so I figured I'd foster him until I could find a rescue or vet charitable enough to help him. So, I took him home. And that spurred three whole weeks of ridicule, which is how long it took me to find a vet who would treat him, from countless passerbys who shouted profanity, insults and even sectarian remarks hurled at me just for trying to walk him, even though I was clearly wearing a HS volunteer badge. Now, I understand why people would assume that this animal was being abused neglected, but the amount of verbal abuse I endured was almost unbearable. Every time I put his leash on I had to mentally prepare myself for confrontation, and hope that it didn't become physical because the sight of this dog made people seriously pee. I heard take care of that dog, you stupid be yelled at me from quite a few cars, got honked at incessantly and my favorites. Why don't you people ever take your dogs to the vet and of course, stupid n, hope you go to jail. There was only one time where one of the hecklers actually stopped telling me how terrible I was to listen to my side of the story. And after I told it, they questioned the validity of my volunteer badge and wouldn't take my story as truth until many of the people at the dog park confirmed it. I took a lot of abuse just for helping that dog, but it was worth it. I eventually adopted him and he gave me 5 of the best years of my life. Miss you, Brock. I once loaded my groceries and let my son who was about 2 into my car, lock the car and walk 10 feet to put the cart up. This woman ran out of nowhere screaming that I had abandoned my son in the car to go shopping and called the police on her cell phone. I said um I am right here putting up the cart. Not even walking in the direction of the store she said she knew what I was up to. I just calmly got in my car and drove off. There was a fire ban in our area that I didn't know about so when I fired up the grill my neighbor called the cops on me. When I asked her why did you call the police instead of just warning me her response was quite literally because I didn't want you to get a ticket. Dumbest freaking thing I ever heard come out of someone's mouth. Luckily the police officer was cool and just made me put the fire out instead of giving me the ticket. When I was 15, I was vacationing with my family near the Ocean City boardwalk. For those who don't know, it's basically a mile or two of stores, restaurants, and arcades positioned on a wooden walkway near the beach. Anyway, one day I'm on the boardwalk by myself, going to arcades, enjoying myself, when I accidentally drop my driver's permit down the cracks of the boardwalk. Not wanting to lose it, I head on down below the boardwalk. It's about 3 feet above the beach, and really easy to get under, and retrieve my card. As I exited, there was this guy standing near where I came out, and accused me of stealing someone's credit card. I told him it was my driver's permit, showed it to him, and walked off. Cue to about an hour later when I'm back at the rental house, when the police knock on the door. They told me they were called about someone stealing a credit card. I explained the story, showed them my permit, and they laughed and walked off. Apparently, the guy followed me for another 30 minutes on the boardwalk. A 15 year old, through arcades, 
and then half a mile back to the house, just so he could call the cops on me. It both pee me off to no ends, and creeped me out knowing someone could stalk me that long without me noticing. TL. DR. Guy thinks I stole a credit card when I was retrieving my driver's permit. I show him the permit. He apparently stalks me for a good while, follows me back to my house, and calls the cops on me. I had a woman threaten to call child protective services because my 13 month old daughter was left alone in the car. I was filling the car with gas at the time. Our old horse died a few years ago. Obviously you can't just bury a 17 hand horse in the backyard. So we called up the renderer. He said he'd be around in about 3 days to pick her up. It's only one guy who serves the tree state area. So 3 days is quick. Since she laid down in the pasture to die, we simply covered her with a piece of tarp and used some stones to weigh it down. A few hours later, our neighbor came over yelling at us that our dead horse smelled atrocious and was going to give her children nightmares. It was October, she wasn't rotting in 100 plus degree weather, and where she had died was in a place that you could only see from our side of the road. The lady lived two houses away across the street. How the heck were her kids going to see it unless they were on our property? She called the police. Turns out, it was the sheriff, or whatever his title is, that answered. After confirming that she did not smell, he asked if we had called the renderer. We told him that he'd pick her up in three days. He turned to the lady and said sometimes it takes three weeks. Go home. When I was a kid, I saw a woman walk up to a station wagon with the window cracked open at a shopping center. She cooed at the dog, opened the unlocked door, then let the dog out. I thought she was the owner, but she went one way and the dog ran the other. Yay. I just saved this dog from the car. Better let it run through busy roads now. I'm such a good person. I worked at an ice cream parlor a while back and we made our own ice cream, waffle cones, chocolates, fudge, etc. Well, one day I making the waffle cones and I wasn't being careful. When I went to take a cone off the iron, the top of the iron fell on the top of my hand. I got a pretty good waffle shaped burn from it. No biggie. I got it taken care of, but I had a pretty good waffle pattern on my hand for a long time after that. Probably a month after it happened. I had a couple come in who saw my burn while I was giving them their ice cream. They were super concerned about it and I told them it was nothing. Just carelessness on my part. They wouldn't let it go and were convinced that I was being abused in the workplace. They wrote out all sorts of information for me. An abuse hotline, website, etc. And gave it to me before they left. They came in a couple more times and checked up on me. Just strange that they wouldn't accept that the burn wasn't intentional. I was on my way to the park with my border collie whippet cross when I ran into an older, clearly slightly crazy woman who wanted to pet her. I lived in a part of my city with quite a few crazy people, and most of them were perfectly harmless, so I didn't think anything of it. At first she was friendly, scratching my dog's head and cueing gibberish. Then she suddenly turned on me and said she's so skinny, you must not be feeding her I explained that she was part whippet and that that was just her natural build, but she wouldn't hear it. She felt my dog's side and started to shout, I can feel her ribs, I bet I can't feel your ribs, why should you eat better than her she proceeded to stand up and poke me in the ribs, and I walked away, with her shouting down the street after me. I had a lady yell out the window of her car that roads are not for bikes. She then proceeded to rear-end the vehicle in front of her. Roads are also not for people who don't pay attention when driving a car. Justice was served there. I know bikes aren't illegal on the roads so you don't need to tell me again. A friend's neighbor called the fire department on a bonfire we were having. Not only was the whole group decently quiet, there was no alcohol involved, and it was only about 9pm. He had warned us about an hour before about keeping the fire controlled. Even though the flames were really low and in an enclosed pit, surrounded by gravel with a hose very close at hand, the fire department came in full gear with their lights on, only to inspect the area and find out that everything was completely safe and legal. I know it's better safe than sorry, but this man was wasting emergency responders time over probably the safest bonfire I've ever been to. Interestingly, the least safe bonfire I've ever been to was at a firefighter's house. 
I was house dog sitting one summer a couple of years ago. It was an admittedly hot day, but the dogs were anxious to go outside so I decided they could go outside and play and pee in the yard for about 30 minutes before they needed to come back in. They were a pair of two poorly trained hound mixes, and would bark at just about anything that offered interaction. After about 15 minutes I hear them barking much more than usual and I come out and there is some lady shouting at the dogs from the side of the lawn, getting them all kinds of riled up. I ask her what the heck she's doing and she starts going off about how she's going to call the animal warden and how I'm torturing these dogs. Look at how they're barking and howling like they're in pain she says. She's dancing around in front of the dogs taunting them and shouting at them and then she has the audacity to tell me that these dogs are barking because they want to come inside. I also don't think my town had an animal warden and if we did, I don't think he she would give two fricks. We lived in Montana, and it was freaking freezing. I had my roughly 3 month old daughter in a fleece sweater and pants, covered in a blanket, in line at a dollar store. She starts to cry. The lady keeps telling me she's cold. I told her she's in fleece in a store with heat. She's not cold. She kept insisting she was cold. I told her she's hungry. It's her feed me cry. She's not cold. As the lady starts getting louder about how us young mothers don't know anything. People naturally started to look. As she continued to scream at me. I told her my child is hungry. See and lift up my shirt. Pop out my tit. And my daughter just went to town. Lady just left her things there and walked out. When I was a toddler, my mom, who was pregnant at the time, would tie me to the clothesline with a lead. Think like a dog run. I could run back and forth along the clothesline, as far as the lead would allow me. The neighbor lady always scolded my mother for doing this, saying it was cruel to treat me like a dog. I honestly don't even remember it, so I doubt it was very traumatic. My mom replied that she was 9 months pregnant with my brother, and having me kept within a certain radius made it much easier for her to keep an eye on me. So, my mom was keeping an eye on me playing in the backyard one day, and the lady came over to yell at her about it again. Crazy neighbor lady ending up untying me. I took off, running straight into the middle of an extremely busy street. My pregnant mother screaming and running after me to catch me. I could have been killed because some stupid lady thought that having me tied to her clothesline was too cruel, but didn't bother to consider that maybe a 2 year old near a busy street should be restrained somehow. Honestly, crazy lady, wherever you are, you did me no favors that day. I bet she also put you in a bed with bars on it to sleep at night, like a baby cage. I was in downtown Portland, or with my wife and child, Tumo, at the time. On a summer day, I had to get fitted for a suit, so my wife and child went off to the park down the road. 15 minutes into the fitting, my wife comes into the store crying. She goes on to explain that she was yelled at by some lady for bringing my kid outside. The lady followed her the entire way back to the store screaming about child abuse. And of course onlookers just stared at my wife. Apparently the lady threw a fit because it was too windy for her infant. It was about 80 f 25 c outside and barely breezy. Apparently this moron of a woman forgot humans have lived with light breezes for many a millennia. TL. DR. Some dumb lady thought a breeze would hurt kill my tumo. Old on a 80 f 25 c day and made my wife cry. For what it's worth, I live in Portland and if I had seen that I would have told that lady to mind her own business, and leave your wife alone. That's ridiculous. Here's a story on the right way to do things concerning rescuing dogs. At my restaurant we noticed a commotion on the other side of the street. One of our hosts went to go check it out, and apparently there was a dog in the car. The meter had 18 minutes left on it, so assuming they had the maximum time. 3 hours. The dog had been in there for a while. I went to check it out, and there was a lady who said we should smash the window and take the dog. To be fair the dog looked miserable. It was 97 degrees out, and super humid. This was right in the middle of the recent east coast heat wave. Someone else said they had seen the couple who owned the car go into my restaurant. I asked for a description and went and looked for them myself. I found what table they were at, and let them know that their dog didn't look like it was doing so well. The man at the table told me that I should mind my own business. I went and checked the seating software and found that the table had been seated for two and a half hours. The cops were called, the dog was taken, and the couple fined. Haven't seen them since. 
Mind your own business. Okay. Get out of my restaurant. My sister owns an older, Arabian stallion, horse. At the time, she was living on a dead end road, on a large property in an area of our city where there were there were several other horse owners and it was a nice, private location with plenty of room to exercise the horse. One day my sister and I arrive at her house after doing errands to find a woman she has never seen before standing over by the horse petting it. My sister asks the woman if she can help her with anything and the woman informs her she has called animal control and launches into a tirade about the horse being underfed and that my sister is a horrible person and the horse needs to be taken away. Right about then, animal control arrives to assess the situation and the horse's condition, only to leave shortly thereafter because the complaint had been unwarranted. The horse is fine. The woman gets huffy and leaves. We left the house again and come back to see that the woman has returned. She has dumped literally bags of apples into the horse's corral, and starts going on again about how the horse is underfed. My sister tells her to leave and that if she comes back she is calling the cops. Feeding a horse a few apples is fine. Stuffing them them to the brim with apples cause cause colic which can be fatal to the horse. In this case, the horse did actually develop colic, and had to be treated by a veterinarian. The woman clearly knew nothing about horses and the only logical conclusion I could come up with is that her ignorance led her to believe that all horses look the same and did not take into account the smaller, slighter frame of the breed. Or she was just crazy. I was once yelled at by an old lady about how evil I am because my dog had a dock tail. Now I don't agree with docking, but her tail had already been cut when I got her. She was the runt of the litter from a farm. She could have had a much worse fate than having no tail. Reminds me of the time when 6 year old me left my life size, but non realistic. Obviously fabric with permanent stupid grin, toy dog in the back of my dad's car in moderate heat. Some woman had been trying to get into the car for a good 10 minutes, scratching the door in the process, and stood screaming at us whilst my dad tried to tell her it was a toy. She wouldn't even accept it when we got the motionless toy dog out of the car and showed her the care label. In fact, she only went away when the manager of the shop where we parked at came outside to see what the heck was going on. TL. DR. Similar situation but with obviously toy dog. I was at a bar and watched an annoying girl slap a virgin bloody mary out of the hand of a 6 month pregnant woman are you trying to kill your baby? Please tell me she didn't let her get away with it. I used to live in a small, hippie riddled town in northern CA. One day an animal rights activist planned an action to be carried out solo. He was going to liberate the lobsters that were being held against their will, waiting to be auctioned off for food to whomever was willing to pay. Basically, he was going to set the lobsters free, from the co-op where they were being sold, out of a huge, clean tank, mind you. So, he stole these lobsters somehow, and he set them free, in the Pacific Ocean, where they all promptly died. Animal liberation at its best. Best crazy advice I ever got was from my neighbor while I was a Peace Corps volunteer. I decided for my own sanity, and possibly just to feel a little American at home, to get a dog. Upon hearing about my plans to get a puppy she spent an hour lecturing me about how I had to let my dog out to eat trash so that when my dog got out to eat trash she would not get sick from eating trash. I did my best to assure her that my dog would at no point be out eating trash. She dismissed me as crazy and told me my dog would die from eating trash. Every time I walked my dog she would point at trash. My dog is still alive and not eating trash. This story confounds me. One year on the 4th of July, I parked my car in a dirt parking lot with a bunch of other cars. When it was time to leave, I saw one line of cars led to the street, and another empty pathway to the road that no one else was taking. It was dark. And I stupidly took the empty pathway to find that there was a 2 foot wide trench that I got my tires stuck into. My car has front wheel drive. While calling a tow truck a lady came up to me screaming that I was blocking the way and that I needed to remove my vehicle at once otherwise she was going to get me arrested. For getting my car stuck where any other car would have gotten stuck. Some kind men helped me get my car out and I cancelled the tow truck. But one of them kept insisting I sue the city. Why? For getting myself stuck in a trench?
Don't sue, but you should report the trench. In many places, the state is not responsible for damages caused by potholes etc. That were never reported. Reporting means they'll fix it or someone whose whose car is damaged will get compensated. Reverse situation. My dad was a vigilante who got attacked by a complete idiot car owner. There was a huge fire in an abandoned house, and three huge, 60 feet high, eucalyptus trees in front caught fire as well. We had alerted the fire brigade but they were still nowhere in sight, and out of the five cars parked directly in front of the eucalyptus trees, only four were moved by the owners. By the time the fire was starting to look like it would start producing humongous falling fiery branches, my dad decided enough was enough, took initiative and a rock. Broke the driver's side window, opened the door, released the handbrake and we all rolled the car to safety. Five minutes after we rolled the unmanned car about 40 feet away from the raging fire, out comes the owner from her nearby house, a woman in her 40s, in an even bigger rage. She demanded to know why he broke the window and after some time passed and we were sure she wasn't joking, we showed her the branches that had been falling continuously where she had parked the car. The smallest one was the size of a baseball bat. The largest one took two fully grown men to carry off the road after the fire was put out. If we hadn't moved the car it would be ruined at the least, and possibly exploded, as the fire brigade later agreed. She, however, failed to understand how that involved her car and how the falling branches would burn and or explode it into oblivion. We had to go to court to explain why she was an idiot and we shouldn't pay for the broken window. We got justified but the trial took a work day off my dad's paycheck. One would guess insurance would cover the costs, but she didn't want to call them. No good deed goes unpunished I guess. TL. DR. Dad saved car from exploding in flames. Got sued instead of thanked. My guess is she wanted the car destroyed so she could claim it on insurance. Your dad fricked up her plans. My daughter was playing outside in our fence front yard. We live on a very quiet cul-de-sac. I was in the kitchen doing some cooking and watching her when I notice a couple stop, look at my kid, and then come up my driveway to ring my doorbell a minute later. I answer the door to have them angrily accuse me of neglect and child endangerment. I was unpleasant to them. In other words, to explain to you how you're putting your child in danger of intruders, they trespassed on your property. My first dog was actually abducted from my front yard by a vigilante, so, I live kind of out in the country and we have a big yard. We never put our dog on a leash because she doesn't like them and we don't need to put her on one. Well one day we couldn't find our dog and she never wanders away. After searching for a while we get a call from the local humane society saying someone has brought in our dog. My dad goes down there and asks who brought our dog there. Apparently some guy saw our dog in the front lawn and decided she wasn't safe so he took her. She was a friendly dog that loved car rides, so of course she went with him. When bringing her in the guy used his belt as a makeshift leash and my dog bit right through it as well as one of the leashes at the humane society. The lady at the human society tells my dad that he needs to have a leash to take his dog home and that he will have to pay for the belt and the leash. My dad informs her that the guy has stolen his dog and he is lucky he doesn't press charges. The release our dog, without a leash, and she happily climbs in my dad's truck and they go home. TL. Doctor. Some butthole stole my dog and had his belt chewed through. Hey Reddit look at this cute dog that I saved. So, by memory, I'm thinking it was around 1984, winter, and my mother leaves me in the car. One of the finest Chevy Novas to ever grace this earth, if you must know, to go into the dry cleaners. I'm 6 years old at the time, wearing an absurdly puffy coat and it's still pretty damned cold in the car. The cleaners was maybe a good 6 or 8 blocks from home, and the heat in that Nova was asthmatic at best. So there I am, minding my own business and watching the snow, when out of freaking nowhere comes an insane pounding on my window, and 6 year old me looks to my right to see what appeared to be an absurd banshee from heck, with a rictus of sheer lunacy shouting about something, 
I may have peed slightly. The pounding and the yelling continues. And I may have even had the hood of my ridiculous coat up. Because I couldn't make out a word this lady was saying. I did the only thing that made sense in my first grade mind. Reached out. And pushed the door lock solidly down. And retreated to the other side of the car. A little more yelling happens. Then finally my mother comes flying out of the cleaners in her full 5 feet 1 inches of righteous fury. Evidently the screaming banshee became somewhat lucid at that point. Because they eventually ended up having a rather tense conversation. Which culminated in my mother opening the door to the car and asking. You know how to open the car door, right? Yes. And you could take your coat off if you wanted. I look at her like she's crazy. Yes. And if you wanted to. You could have walked the 8 feet to the door of the dry cleaners and come in and got me if you needed anything? Um. Yes. I'm 6. But I'm not a moron. A piercing glare. A slamming car door. And we're off to the next stop on our whirlwind errand tour with one very silent banshee standing in the parking lot. In the snow. Watching us depart. I'm glad this occurred well before mobile phones. Now that I think about it. I'm a dude. I was working at Victoria's Secret at the time and I was doing all the go backs, restocking, and generally straightening the store. I had some pink paper bags, filled with sensors and clips in one, and uncensored items in others. That day, the store was messy. We had a collection of items that were uncensored, and I was running around organizing the store. I was periodically taking uncensored items, putting them in corresponding bags, and when I came to the appropriate section, I censor the item and meticulously arrange the panties or bras, or rack in an aesthetically pleasing fashion as per limited brand's policy. So, an hour into this particularly droll activity on a slow day, I noticed an older woman following me, eyeing me. When I would look at her, she would turn away or walk away. I would have asked her if she needed help, but with a combination of pretending I did not exist, my workload, and the other equally capable associates present. I did not. She would follow me until I was near the exit, in the corner. I was shuffling through the remaining items, popping senses on the seam. I had noticed that on a particular panty, the seam was unraveling and I placed the item closer to my face. I began inspecting it, my two thumbs twiddling against the seam to get a tensile extent of the damage. Then I felt an arm grab hold of me. The older woman had a grip on my bicep. She is now pulling me away from my work to my greeter. Call your manager. I've been following this pervert trying to steal and sniff panties. Double quote. The greeter was taken aback and was honestly confused. She looks at me, back at her, and all the items in my hand. She finally says, Imam, he's the stock manager. Double quote. Oh man, let me get another hit of that clean cotton smell. Sniff. Oh sweet Jesus yes. Can I just say that idiotic vigilante sounds like a great name for a history channel show. Little backstory. I work as a mechanic at a rental yard for construction equipment. I had forgotten my phone in the shop and had to go in at about 11pm and get it. I go and unlock the front gate and drive in and shut the gate behind me. After I grab the phone I leave. I notice parked across the street is the same car that saw me drive in. They've been sitting there watching me the whole time. I leave and they drive behind me for a solid 15 minutes. I would purposely run yellow lights and they'd still be on my tail. I didn't want them following me home so about a block away I pulled over and got out. They slow down then drive away. Frick vigilantes. If you see something, call the police. Not really vigilante because no justice is being served but I'm forever getting home remedies for my lung problems. It's a genetic disease, cystic fibrosis, with no known cure and some pretty impressive science put into developing treatments. Despite this I still get people insisting all sorts of bulls treatments to me. Everything from oregano oil held under my tongue to doing C. No really, that's been suggested as an attempt to get rid of my sinus problems hello people. If any of that crap worked I would be doing it. I'm sorry to inform you oregano oil won't cure genetic diseases. That reminds me of a friend, girl, I used to play racquetball with. When you play racquetball, you get hit with racquetballs, and they leave bruises that last a couple weeks sometimes. Well she's at the beach with her BF, and as soon as her BF goes to the bathroom, a couple women come over, and tell her that they know he's beating her, and to come away with them, and they'll protect her. 
She tries telling them the bruises are from our ball but they wouldn't believe her leave her alone. Yes, we know he's beating you at racquetball. My old boss lives in rural California and has two or three farm cats to keep the rodent population in check. The cats would come and go as they pleased, and it wasn't uncommon to not see them for days at a time. During the housing boom in 2006, people started moving from the city to new developments a few miles down the road from his farm. One day a woman shows up at his door holding one of his cats. The cat seems very agitated, and she has scratches all over her arms. She says she that this cat must have gotten out, and she is returning it. She holds it out to him. He says uh, thanks and takes the cat and puts it on the ground. The cat runs off. Woman loses her crap, yelling at him about how he's a horrible cat owner, how it could be hit by a car. He says something to the effect of I'm the only person who lives on this road. If it gets hit by a car, it's a pretty crappy cat. City people have a hard time realizing the fact that cats on farms are just as much functional animals as cows are. It's still sad when one takes a nap in the field during harvest season though. Not really a vigilante but something of the sort happened to me when I was younger and at an airport. I was probably about 13 or so and I was waiting with my family in the waiting area before you board the plane. There was a guy in the army with his uniform on waiting near us and this older lady who was listening to him intently. I was close enough to hear him and her talk but wasn't really listening. Anyway as my dad called me over to him this lady grabbed my arm wouldn't let go and demanded that I stay and listen to this army guy talk and about how I should thank him for his service and how I should be respectful and listen. My dad saw this and came over and told her to let me go. She did but then tried to argue with him about how I need to have respect for the military and all that. He told her that as my dad he'll take care of my values and to leave me alone. It freaked me out a bit as she seemed like she was kind of out of her mind. I guess I should make clear that I wasn't like bashing the guy for being in the army or anything. Just minding my own business. Should have put her down. Sorry lassie. What would have been best, see, is if she somehow managed to get the car door open, and then the dog ate her. Win win. Intruder. Must protect the masters. I went to the grocery store with my dog in the car on a ridiculously hot day. I brought two keys so I could lock the car door with the engine still running and AC on. As I walked away from my car, some woman actually jumped out of the passenger side of a moving vehicle and starts screaming. I say the engine's running and the AC is on. She doesn't miss a beat and keeps screaming about how it's too hot to have my dog in the car. I repeated myself. She then turned and stormed off. Apparently I was in butthole for not letting her have her moment of do good a glory. My wife was driving a couple weeks ago and saw an older couple in a small sedan next to her in traffic with a toddler sitting on the lap of the male front seat passenger without a car seat. She followed them a couple miles all the way to a Walmart parking lot and jumped out to go give him them a talking to. As she approached their car, she discovered that the male was extremely hairy and wearing shorts and what she thought to be a toddler's head was his hairy exposed knee. TL. DR. Wife thought tall man's hairy knee was a toddler sitting on his lap in traffic. Actually he was. He reproduces vegetatively and his knee was splitting off into a separate organism. Two stories. When I was a kid I was a very picky eater. One day at daycare, I bit my friend and she bit me on my face. To make me feel better, my mom took me out to an ice cream shop. But I hated ice cream, so she just got a plain cone for me. I tried to run off before she finished paying and she turned around and grabbed me to keep me close. And I started throwing a fit. This lady tried to take me from my mom and started screaming at her for abusing me and not getting me ice cream and asked me if I was okay and tried to make me go with her. My mom had to sit there and let her ice cream melt so she could explain to this lady what was going on. Second, my great aunt had very well trained German shepherds and a pickup truck. She was at a gas station once and went inside to pay, and when she got back some man started to scream at her about how her dogs were probably not trained and that they were a danger to everyone. She just looked at the man and snapped her fingers. Both dogs were on either side of her growling at the man within 2 seconds. She glared at him for a couple more seconds and snapped again. The dogs went back into the truck, and she turned around and got in and drove off, not saying a word. She was a beast. 
When I was born I had something wrong with my eyelids that required surgery. This was in the early 70s, so the doctors thought it best to wait until I was a little older to do the surgery. They did the surgery at 9 months old. It left me with two black eyes, duh, eye surgery, and then the doctors put a cast on each one of my arms to prevent me from touching my eyes. Other than looking like heck, I was completely healthy. Here's my mom, lugging around this baby with two black eyes, and what looks to be like two broken arms. Some woman attacked my mom in grocery store to see how she liked being beaten up. Police were called, my mom explained, and the woman, was extremely embarrassed at that point, was arrested. Needless to say, my mom ran errands without me after that until the bandages came off. It's been 35 plus years, and I always wonder if that woman still feels stupid about beating up a woman whose baby just had surgery. I would kill to be in a 60F car. It is so dang hot here. I was walking home once with my girlfriend when this woman came out of nowhere and asked if we had seen her cat. She said the cat was ever so naughty, in a British accent, over and over again. We went about our business and went inside my place. We came out 5 minutes later with my dog to take him for a walk. Just as we get outside this cat darts out of an alley and across the street. My girlfriend looks at me and yells that's her cat. The cat proceeded to run across the street and hide under a car. My gf stayed near the car with the cat while I went to find this lady with my dog. She was wandering about a block from where we last saw her. I told her we thought we had found her cat. Her response what the cat was very naughty. I led her back to the car and the cat tries to run away from her. We kind of corner it under another car. The woman keeps telling the cat how naughty it's being and eventually picks it up. Tells us she found the cat about 2 weeks ago and that it's been running away at least once every 2 days. TL. DR. I helped a woman kidnap a very naughty cat. There is a fast foodish restaurant near me that serves Japanese food. Yokisabas, teriyaki bowls, etc. Takes about 5 minutes to get your food if you order it there. Or 1 minutes if you call in ahead and pay. You get the picture. It's in a little shopping complex. Next to a karate dojo, etc. So here I am. In Tucson. In February. Freaking beautiful outside. 70F. A guy pulls up in his rover. Windows cracked one in or so, and runs inside to get his food he had called in. His baby is asleep in a child seat in the back seat. It's not done cooking, so he pays. It's been about a minute, or so. A crowd begins to gather around his car. They start shaking his car at 1.30 minutes after he comes in, and at the same time a woman comes in and yells, like legit yells, whoever the butthole is that owns the roves needs to get out here now, your baby is dying. Whoa. Okay, the father sprints out, people out there are yelling at him, one guy is, and I crap you not, trying to punch his way through the back glass window to get into the guy's rover to the baby, this guy is also wearing the uniform for the aforementioned karate dojo, the guy runs out, sees his baby crying, at this point, in the back seat in his baby seat, my friends and I had walked out there too at this point, so, the driver flips, tells everyone to get away from his car, to stop yelling, it's making the baby cry, etc. One lady then says the cops are on the way and he better not move. He reaches inside, gets his baby, sees the baby is in no way dying, just now very upset at all the commotion. Three minutes have now passed since he parked and walked inside. So anyways, we go inside, expecting him to leave, cause why the frick wouldn't you, but he waits. I didn't think about it at the time but they had given his license plate to the cops. The cops come. The people outside. Five or six of them. Mob the cop. Tell him the dad had been inside for 40 minutes and hadn't checked on his baby so they came out to help. The baby looked like he was in danger so they had to try to break the glass. Etc. We. My friends and I. The owner of the restaurant. The dad. And two other groups of people in the resort. Go outside. Tell them cop what actually happened. The father is issued a warning. The cop leaves, and then, right before the father leaves the woman who had come inside yelling gives lip to the father. The father puts his kid down, calmly turns around and tells her if he ever sees her making his child cry again he will call the cops on her. Really, he was calm, 
I am not being biased here. The karate guy then puffs up his chest and tells the dad to frick off before I kick your butt and that he doesn't deserve to be a father. The father drives away, and two very crappy people, as well as about four other misguided people, feel like they served justice today. Blew me away at the time. One time when I was 3 years old my mother took me to a museum and a crazy mother there somehow took an increased interest in us and decided that since I don't look very much like my mother, I'm half black half white what a shocker, that she must have kidnapped me and actually called the cops on us. The police showed up the house as I'm sure they're required to do by procedure and it was quickly proven that I was in fact my mother's son and the crazy woman probably never got the mental health she so obviously needed. Not really an idiot, but nonetheless it was hilarious. I was smoking a pork shoulder on my BBQ. I went inside to let it do its thing when a little while later a bearded man burst into my house. He was wearing cut off Jean shorts, a muscle tank top from the 80s and rain boots. His head reminded me of a beach boy, the bearded 50 year old look. He shouts your house is on fire. I, of course jump up and run outside thinking something must be wrong. I open the barbecue and it's smoking away, nothing wrong. He followed me into the backyard and I told him everything was cool, I was just smoking some meat. There was like a small crowd outside the backyard gate, must have been his family or something. I thanked him for his concern, and my stupid brain kept telling me ask him what he is wearing. I never did though, the guy just leaves without saying much and calls off the crowd. I never saw him again but I still have laughing fits when my wife reminds me of the time the old man and Jean cut offs and rain boots bust through the door to save us. It was good on him to check, he wasn't an idiot, just dressed like one. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video.